It's good to be with all of you guys, and it is so good to have all of you online joining together that we can do this as one church family. Amen? This is awesome. I'm so excited to start a new year, maybe just as excited to leave the old one behind. Amen? Uh, here's the thing, though. Was, I've been talking to some people this morning about this. The, the reality is this, and let's not forget it. Last year was hard, right? Last year, we, we lost a lot of things. But one thing never changed. And what was that? Jesus. That's right. Our Savior, Jesus, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was good last year. He's going to be good again this year because that's who he is. Amen? And we face this year with courage, with faith, and trust that no matter what comes, he remains the same, and he's enough for us. Amen. Well, today I'm so excited to start a brand new series with all of you called Bringing Down the Everybody, what's the last one? House. We're bringing down the house. Uh, and this uh, series um, is important, I think. This five-week series is critical for us because what happens at home affects everything else in our lives. Every, everything in our lives is touched by what happens at home. Because that's where we live, that's where we, we interact, that's where we think, that's where everything starts, is at home. And, and, and if things are good at home, things are, 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 are stronger and they're better. And when things are not so good at home, it, it affects our energy, it affects our attitudes, it affects our interactions with other people. And our relationships at home can set the tone for our entire life. And maybe, maybe today, as you think about your home, maybe today you would say, my home is, is doing really well. I mean, we're, we're just feeling good. Things are pretty solid at home. And, and maybe you're saying, well, you know, we're holding it together at home. Uh, we're getting by. Things are... Things are a little bit shaky every now and then. It's a little bit rough every around the edges every now and then, but, but, but we're kind of holding it together. And some of you may be saying, my home is an absolute wreck. My home is, an, is a mess. There's so much tension in this relationship, and there's so much um, like subtlety going on over here, and we just don't go there. And there, there's just, there's just kind of tension flying around inside my home. And, and in this series, what we're going to do is we're going to look at five ways to wreck our homes in five ways that we can turn that around. Because our homes matter. Where we live matters. And, and, and I wanna invite you guys into a challenge over the next five weeks. We're gonna talk about a lot of different things over the next five weeks. We're gonna look at a lot of scripture and, and we're gonna ask God to speak to us. But here's the thing, we can agree with what God says in his word. We can even really desire to be different and, and to line up with God's word. But here's the thing. If we don't do anything different, nothing's going to change. And so here's my challenge. My challenge is every week in this series to not just agree with God, but to come away from our time together with one thing that you're going to change in your home that week. One thing you're going to change in your home that week, and by the end of this month, after five weeks in the series, there'll be at least five things that you intentionally shift in your home for the better. Can you do that? Amen. At this point, you say yes. Okay, great. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see as we go. Um, but I really want to challenge you guys to do more than listen and agree this series. So today, the first way that we're going to look at wrecking our home comes from this incredible challenging teaching that Jesus lays before this crowd of people. It's found in Luke chapter 14. Uh, and, and like I said, this is incredibly challenging, uh, but it's incredibly important and helpful. And it's found in, in uh, verse 25 and 26, and it says this. Now great crowds accompanied him, that's Jesus, and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Jesus says, you got to hate your family or you can't be my disciple. 
all right, have a great day. All right, like, wait a second, hold on. What do you, this needs a little bit of unpacking, a little bit of understanding to go with this. It needs some clarification because scripture calls us to love our families and not to hate anyone. So, so what is Jesus getting at? What is Jesus saying here? Jesus is not saying to literally hate your family. But what he is saying, and this is a a Jewish idiom, is by saying hate, what he's saying is that you are to love them less than you love me. You're to love them less than you love me. Everyone you love, this is Jesus' concept, even those you love the most, your family, the people that that you love with the the most oomph in your life, you must love them less than you love me or you cannot be my disciple. You must love me supremely. And then he goes on to say, even more than your own life, you've got to love me. You must be ready to sell out completely if you're going to follow me. That's what Jesus is trying to say. That that there's no middle ground, there's no no partial, there's no halfway or or half-hearted measures. Jesus calls for total, complete, and our highest allegiance to him, bar none. Wow, that's pretty intense, Jesus. (laughs) That, that's, that's really setting the bar high. You're asking a whole lot here, Jesus. Why are you asking so much? There's only two reasons why Jesus asks us to, to do anything. Two reasons why. The first is to provide for us. The second is to protect us. Jesus wants to provide. He wants to give the best to us. And he wants to protect us and guard us from the things that are not good. And so he calls us to things that will aid in that happening. He never arbitrarily says, I just want you to do this because. That will probably be hard for you. I'll just ask you to do that because. He's calling us and he's inviting us into something that we might not naturally step into because he knows what's good for us. And he wants to provide and he wants to protect And what that means is that when Jesus calls you and I to sell out to him, to give him the highest allegiance of our lives and turn our lives over to him completely, what he's doing is he's calling us to the best, most satisfying, most God-glorifying way to live. This is the best. Come this way. That's what Jesus is doing. He's saying... Make the number one life, uh, the number one love in your home and in your life, me. Put me at the top. Sell out to me. To be his disciple, we must choose. I'll put it on the screen. We must choose to sell out to Jesus. So the first way to wreck your home is to sell out to anything but Jesus. Sell out to anything less than Jesus. There's a powerful passage in the Old Testament that I want to look at with you today that that helps us understand this more clearly. It's a great example, and it's a powerful teaching on this. And the history behind it is this, that, that God's people, the Israelites, were enslaved in Egypt. And God sent Moses to go and set them free. And so Moses goes and they're freed and and he leads them out of Egypt. And well, they whine and complain enough that they wander in the desert for 40 years before they get to go into the promised land. And right before they go into the promised land, Moses dies. And he, right before he dies, he appoints his successor named Joshua. And so Joshua steps to the forefront and he leads the people of God into the promised land. They conquer the promised land. And now Joshua is 110 years old and he's he's about to die. And so he steps up for his final time in front of the people of God, gathered together, his final words to them. And he knows these are his final words. And so he says, what are the things that these people need to know? The thing that matters most, what am I going to give to these people with the last words I have to share with them? We find this incredible passage 
in Joshua 24, 15, where he confronts their past and he challenges them to choose their future. Look what it says. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods of your fathers, your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua steps up and he says, the time's come. It's time to choose. I'm drawing a line, people. Today we are going to determine the future. This is it. The time has come. You've been playing around, and sometimes you're, you're kind of following after the Lord, and sometimes you follow after these, these false gods, and you're running after them, but today is the day you've got to make a choice. Who are you going to sell out to completely? And what you and I need to understand is that it's, it's not so much if we choose to sell out. It's to whom we're going to sell out because you and I are always sold out to something. There's always something that our heart is most gravitated towards. There's always something or someone that we are completely sold out to. And who or whatever that is, listen church, that is your God, lowercase g. Whoever we've sold out to or whatever we've sold out to, that is our God. And, and unfortunately, the, the one that is the easiest to sell out to because of our sinful nature is ourselves. That I'm sold out to me. And our main question in life when we're sold out to ourselves is this. What do I want? What do I want? I wake up and I ask the question, what do I want? And in the middle of the day, I say, I don't feel like it. I want that. And at the, you know, in the evening time, I'm asking, what do I want? And that's my main question if I'm sold out to myself. Some of us can be sold out to our kids. Well, we were supposed to take care of them and protect them and, and, and love them and help them, but we can actually go too far and we can actually sell out to our kids. Where our main question in life that drives things that we do is this, what do they want? Well, is that what you want? Then that's what we're gonna do. Is that what you want? Let's do it. We can't do that. That's not what they want. It's what they want, and that drives everything in our lives. We're sold out to our kids. And it might be an addiction that's, that's telling you what you want. Here's what, I'm, what I want, because my addiction is telling me what I am after, and I'm sold out to whatever that is. And maybe it's something that you're not even aware of that's driving you that you're actually sold out to. Whatever it is, listen, it's controlling your life, it's determining your decisions, and it is shaping who you are. Whatever you sell out to, that's what it does to you. You become like it. So, so here's the question, how do you know what you're sold out to? How do I know if I'm sold out to these things or that thing? The answer is easily discerned by following the trail. I remember I came home one day and, and I came in the house and, and I had gone a little ways in and, and I was doing some things and, I, and I, I walked back and I saw that there was mud that had been tracked into the house. I was, I was home by myself. I was like, I can't ask who did this, but I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out who the guilty party is and they will pay the price. And so I followed these tracks back, and I followed them, followed them, followed them. It's on the carpet. I got to get that out. It's on this. And I came to the place where they landed, and, and there were my shoes, because I had just brought the mud in with me and then took off my shoes and then saw it. So I was the guilty party. The trail led me to myself. And, and here's the thing. The trail never lies. The trail never lies, and the trail that, that tells us who we're sold out to 
The way we discern who we're really serving and worshiping is the trail of how we spend our time. If you were to write down everything you did this past week and what you chose to do with your time, it would tell you a lot about what you're sold out to. It's tracking your spending. What have you chosen to put your money towards? Where have you exerted your energy? On what things did you decide? Because I've only got so much energy to give, I gave it to these things. And what is the thing that has garnered most of your desire that you have thought about and wished you had and wanted? What are those things? If you follow those, if you take the time, and I encourage you to do this, to sit down and even write those four things out and write next to it, what are the things that have taken the most of this? You will begin to follow the trail and you will begin to discover what is it that I am actually sold out to that's actually leading my life. And what you're going to find is what you are actually serving and worshiping. And whoever or whatever it is, is leading your life and it's taking you somewhere. And Joshua says to the people in this moment, in this, this clarion call, these final words, he says, today is a wake-up call. You've been following false gods. You've been playing over here. You've been doing this. and you've been, It's time to stop all of that and draw the line and look at what is leading your life and make a decision intentionally about who is going to lead your life from this day forward. And Joshua says, I've made my choice. And in the verse, very simply put, he says, as for me, as for me, this is what I have decided. This is my choice. And there's a couple things about his decision that I think are important for us to see. And the first thing is this, that Joshua's choice is personal. He says, as for me, this is my choice. And it's, it's got to be your choice. It can't be your, your parents' choice. It can't be your friend's choice or your spouse's choice. It can't be your pastor's choice. It has to be your choice between you and God. What is your choice today? It's personal personal. Uh, when I was growing up, my brother, who's a few years older than me, he always had favorites. He always had, well, that's my favorite kind of car. That's my favorite kind of ice cream. That's my favorite baseball team. And you know what my favorites were when I was real young with him? Whatever his favorite car was, was my favorite car. His favorite ice cream was my favorite ice cream. His favorite baseball team was my favorite baseball team. Because if he liked it, I, I liked it too. His choice was my choice. It wasn't until I got a little bit older and said, you know what? I, I need to choose for myself to have favorites. And I had to stop and ask myself the question, what is my favorite? What do I actually like rather than just liking what he likes? It, it's a personal choice. I have to make it. I can't just rest on his choices. I've got to make my own choice. And our choice is ours, and it's no one else's because it's personal. As for me, here's my choice. And the second thing we see is that Joshua's choice is passionate. This isn't a low-key decision. This is not just some flippant decision that he makes. I don't know, as for me, I guess I'll, I'll serve the Lord. He says, as for me, this is it. I've drawn the line, and I'm all in. This is not a casual decision. Today, I am choosing this, and there's no going back. When I was 25 years old, I got an invitation, and this invitation was to move to West Virginia. Uh, and up until that point, I had lived in Illinois my whole life. Uh, my whole family is there. All my friends are there. I went to college there. I went to grad school there. And everything I know, every person I know, they're all there. And there was this invitation to leave everything and come to West Virginia where I didn't know but, what, two people at the time? And come and give your life 
to a city and to people you don't know, you've never been to, and you, you know nothing about, but just go and, and, and do all of that. And it was a struggle. And I fought God hard on it. Just a little, little aside, um, don't fight God. He always wins. Just give in, <laughs> FYI. Um, and so I came to the point where I had to make a choice. Am I going to go or not? And God and I came to his understanding. And, uh, and I said, okay, I'll go. But here's the deal. It's not like I'm going for the weekend and I can come back. It's like I'm going and I'm not coming back. I'm just, I'm just going. I, I, there is no retreat. There is no turning back. And if it goes well, it's up to you, God. If it goes badly, it's up to you, God. I'm just going. I'm going to throw myself into this thing. There's no turning back, and, and, and there has been no turning back for, for coming up on 23 years, and, and I'm grateful that God called me here. It's been an honor to be here, and I'm looking forward to what God's going to continue to do here because God is alive and well and moving in Parkersburg, West Virginia, amen? Joshua was saying, I'm selling out, and there's no going back, even if I have to stand alone in this. As for me, I don't know what you're all going to choose, but this is what I am doing. And I am not turning back like the old song says. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. I'm done with my choices. It's been made. And this is the direction I'm going. His choice was personal and it was passionate. There's no turning back. And then he continues and he says this. But as for me... And my what, everybody? House. As for me and my house. Now, in this day and time, when, when the house here, it would refer to your family and anyone that was an employee of yours. So, so it was really everyone that you had any influence over in your, in your life. In, in this sense of, of house, he says, and in my house... We're going to serve the Lord. It is my commitment that we're going to honor God if it's up to me. And I'm going to set the tone and I'm going to set the example. And I'm going to lead the way by serving and honoring and worshiping the Lord God above everything else. And I'm going to do my best to influence everyone around me to do the same. That's the way it's going to go in my home. His choice was to sell out to the Lord personally and passionately and to use his influence to honor God in every way possible in his home. We just entered into a new year, 2021, and we've all experienced a lot this past year, a lot of changes. And, and it's, it's been reactionary on our part. It's, oh, this thing, oh, we've got to react to that. And oh, this way, oh, we can't do and we have to. And, and it's kind of pushed us back on our heels, just responding and reacting to everything around us. But today, the call is this, to choose to get off of our heels and to lean forward, to choose the direction of our life as we start a new year. We have to choose who is going to lead our lives in 2021. Instead of coasting into a new year and just playing games with whatever comes our way or not even being aware of who we're selling out to, today there's a line and the call is to cross the line and choose to sell out to Jesus. And the, 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 the choice must be seen in our homes. And so let me ask you this question. What might change in your home if you were to completely sell out to Jesus? Would anything change in your home? What would need to change if you were to completely sell out to Jesus? Well, the Israelites say, we're with you, Joshua. As for you, as for us, we choose to serve the Lord too. We're with you in this. And it says in verse 16, then the people answered, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. No, we are going to serve the Lord our God. And Joshua says, that's great. That's fantastic. Now that you've made the decision with your mind, I'm so excited for you. 
here's what you need to do to put it into motion, to put it into practice. Because it starts with a decision, but a decision must become action before it becomes real. And in verse 23, he says this. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. Two things. Two things that when you make a decision to sell out to Jesus, we must do to take the first steps of actually living a sold out life. Put away foreign gods and incline our heart to the Lord. The first one, put away foreign gods. A foreign god in this day and age was an idol. It, it was a physical thing that, that we would bow down or worship or trust in or expect to take care of us. And he's saying to put those away. A foreign god is anything for us that gets in the way of giving all of our love and devotion and surrender to God Almighty. Anything that diminishes that and takes some of that away is a foreign God. And when Joshua says, put them away, it doesn't mean put them under the bed for another day. It means get rid of them, get them out of your life, get them so far from you, you don't even remember they exist. Don't mess around with them, clean house. You and I need to realize that something today is getting the best of us. The very best of you, the very best of your energy, the very best of your time, the very best of your thinking, something is getting that today. And whatever it is, it's competing with Jesus, and it needs to lose. Jesus needs to get our very best. The thing that's competing is a foreign God. So the question is this, what do you need to stop? What do you need to stop spending your money on? Today. Not, well, that's a good thought. I'll get to that. Today, what do you need to stop spending certain money on? What do you need to stop watching? What do you stop, need to stop filling your mind with? What are the things that you are doing that you need to stop doing that? What, what needs to leave your home and never come back? What foreign God needs to be expelled from your life because it's competing and it needs to lose. Whatever's competing for your best needs to lose to Jesus. And the section, second action is this, incline your heart to the Lord, which means to, to turn your affection and your allegiance from anything else and turn it to God. Here's where it was, but now I am intentionally redirecting it to Jesus turning it away and turning to Jesus. We can decide to sell out to Jesus with our heads. But we need to sell out with our hearts, he says. It's not enough just to stand and pound a podium and say, I choose to sell out for Jesus. And I'm going to get rid of some stuff. He's saying, where's your heart? You have to turn your heart. And here's the problem. Um, our heart doesn't take orders very well. We can't just tell our hearts to sell out to Jesus. Okay, heart, are you ready? Sell out. Why do you still care more about that? I need you to care more about him. Sell out. What's wrong? It's not responding. And here's what we need to understand about our hearts. Our hearts don't respond to commands. They respond to truth. The heart is a muscle that is responsive, and it needs truth to respond to. And so here's what we have to do. If we're going to incline our hearts to the Lord, we got to tell our hearts the truth and just let them respond. We got to tell them the truth that, that you and I are made by God and for God. He made us because he loves us and he wants us to know him, to love him, and to live for him. And that there's no better way to live. And he wants to be with us for all eternity. But we're broken and we're really good at messing things up. Even our relationships, we're really good at breaking them in the home, outside of the home, and even with God. Our sin breaks 
relationships, especially our relationship with God. And in our strength and in our power, we don't have what we need to bring it back together and fix it. But God, who knows all about you and all about me, everything about us, and he has seen everything and he knows just how unworthy we are of his love, he chooses to love us anyway. And his desire is to restore you and to to make you his own for all eternity. And that desire led him to come here, Jesus, God in the flesh, to live a perfect life. And then to willingly give his life, being crucified on a cross, crying out, it is finished, and dying on your behalf and on my behalf. And when he did, he took our sin upon himself and he paid for all of your mistakes and all of the rebelliousness inside of you. And then he rose from the dead and he conquered death for you. He gave everything to rescue you and to bring you back to himself and give you life. When you tell your heart that, when you preach that truth to your heart, it will respond in awe of his grace, in awe of his mercy, and and it will cry out, what could I possibly do but give everything I have back to you? That joyful surrender, let me throw myself at you. You can't tell your heart to sell out you got to preach the truth to your heart and your heart will sell out on its own. So church, the line is drawn. The invitation has been given. The call is to choose to sell out to Jesus, to put away foreign idols and incline our hearts to the Lord. And so let me just ask you on this first Sunday of 2021, what's your choice? What's gonna have the best of you? What's gonna lead your life? What's gonna shape you? What's gonna shape your home? What's gonna shape your interaction with other people? Are you gonna choose to sell out to Jesus? And if you choose to sell out to Jesus, let me ask you, what is one thing, one thing that needs to change this week in order to honor God in your home? What would that be? What will you do this week? What will you change this week in order to honor God as you seek to sell out to Jesus in your own home? Now, church, may we start 2021 in the right direction, and may you be able to say, may I be able to say along with Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for loving us enough to show us what we need most, that we need you. (laughs) Thank you that, that in all of the things that distract us, the things that pull our attention, that pull our hearts away from you, you wait patiently and you simply beckon us to come back to you. You have made a way for us to get to you through Jesus and you're calling us back again today to cross the line and to sell out to you, Jesus. If today your choice is, in fact, to sell out to him, Would you just tell him that right now? Would you just tell him in the quietness of your heart, Jesus, I want to sell out to you. Help me to put away anything that competes with you. And turn my heart towards you to love you most. Help me to make a change in my home this week that honors you above everything else. You are so good. Thank you for loving me today. As we continue to pray, as you look at your life, maybe you realize the direction you're headed and you don't like it. 
maybe you, you know in the core of your being that you need more than you've got. And, and you know that there's something wrong between you and God, and you know there's nothing that you can do to fix it. But you believe that God sent his son Jesus to die in your place so that the moment you put your trust in him, he would save you and forgive you and bring you into an eternal relationship with himself. And if that's you and you're ready today to turn away from doing life your way and to give your life to him, to put your trust in Jesus, to be your savior, then I'm gonna simply invite you right now to pray a prayer, to express your heart to God, to receive salvation today. If that's you in the quietness of your heart, would you just repeat this after me? Dear God, I know that I am a sinner and I wanna ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you sent Jesus to die for my sin and that you raised him from the dead three days later, that I, I could be forgiven and I could have new life. So I choose today to turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I choose to sell out to Jesus today, to trust you and to follow you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me today. It's in your name, Jesus, that we trust and pray. And all God's people said, amen. Would you celebrate with those who gave their lives?